to a, a Hunter and Taylor from LA City, some folks from Southern California Association of Governments. So it's a, it's a group effort, it's not just one person. Um, and, uh, and I also want to thank the, our, we do have actual money sponsors so that we get the donuts and all this stuff for free. So first of all, Lacey allows us to use this space, which again, we really appreciate. It's an awesome space. Um, the LA County ISD um, and the LA City Controller's Office, as well as the Southern California Area Governments, all donating a little bit of money to make sure that you guys can have coffee and donuts for free. So we really appreciate that. And we're going to uh, continue that going forward. So if we hit up your individual departments for money, say yes. Um, so just really quick, I want to make a couple quick announcements of things that are coming up. Um, there is an event here at Lacey, I'm going to let um, I'm gonna let you talk about that one. But, um, so there's a transportation camp um, this Saturday. Um, it's at UCLA, it's called transportationcamp.org is where the place is. It's a uh, unconference. That means something to people, I don't know. It doesn't mean it's not, it's not um, and then also coming up in August is uh, DataCon, it used to be called Big Data LA, Big Data Day LA. And that's dataconla.com, that's at USC. So if anybody's interested, you can look that up as well. Um, so really quick, I wanna bring up uh, Claire. She's gonna give us like a few minutes on this is what Lacey is and what's going on here. So, right away. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Lacey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Claire Lay. I run marketing and events for Lacey. I've been here about two and a half years. Um, and we exist to promote an inclusive green economy for the city of Los Angeles. Uh, the building you're in is known as the La Crescent Innovation Thanks for uh, having me today. Um, 
I do a lot of presentations, but when John invited me to Data and Donuts, it was like, oh wow, really? I get to, I mean, this is an honor, believe me. Um, you know, I, I have to present to governance and CIO forums and things like that, but getting to present to you all, uh, this is something new. So thank you for having me today. Hopefully um, I can give you information and we can have a, a dialogue today around what we're doing in LA County and how that impacts you. And maybe we can share some life experiences in terms of where we are in our data journey because as you all know better than I do, data is a journey, right? It's, it's not a destination. And um, the more we can utilize the data and provide data for our strategic and operational decision makers, the better we're gonna be as an organization, <coughs> right? So um, a couple things I'd like to do uh, just to get started today is, um, I don't get the sense that, that this group is really, you just wanna sit there and listen to a CIO uh, present today. So what I wanna start with is in Alaska, a question to get us going is, uh, raise your hand and tell me what you'd like to hear from me today. And if I have it in the slide deck, then yes. If I don't, then I'll make it up. So what would you like to hear about LA County and data? Sir. Uh, any use of data for uh, benefit law enforcement and public safety? Okay. That's a big topic. That, that could yeah. be a whole presentation in itself, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, good. Sir. How are you innovating okay. as far as that is concerned? All right. Good. talking about where LA County is going with their uh, with their data journey and what some of the things that we're working on um, where we are in our maturity level and some of the uh, problems that we're trying to, to solve so that we can use our data more effectively I'm going to talk about our uh, strategic goals that we just developed which uh, one of those goals is data as a utility as a nice ring Right, so the, the concept there is just like electricity, right? You, you plug it, you plug in uh, your your power cord, and electricity flows. You know that's that's the vision for data um, that we have, and is that it's a utility, um, and it flows freely, and it's securely accessible, and um, it's it's usable, right? So right now that's not the case, and but that's that's the vision. We have to start with the vision. A little bit about um, LA County and our technology organization. Um, you know, a lot. I get a lot of, well, what does the CIO's office do? Um, because we have our, our central technology uh, department called ISD, and then each department, and there's many departments in LA County. Um, I don't know the exact count because it keeps changing, but I think we're at 37, is that right? 37, because the arts and culture is a the no, department now. That's 37. That's 37, okay. And they, they all have their own IT shops, they all have their own applications. Um, ISD, our central technology, hosts uh, some of them, but um, you can imagine, you know, a very distributed type of environment. And our office, the CIO's office, um, is really in charge of strategy, governance, advise all of the departments as well. We have a fairly large and growing information management uh, section that I'll show you and also um, a fairly large
large security team as well. Um, but we do a lot of work with departments in terms of helping them with their strategy, their projects, their organizational structure, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's how we're structured. So given that structure, what do you see as potential problems in terms of data, data related problems with that structure or challenges? I, I will call on people. <laughs> Sharing data across 37 departments. So talk more about that, because that is an issue. <laughs> <laughs> the problem that I see. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, siloed information is usually has an input. The ability to be innovating, talking about innovation, or the ability to create the best solutions for what you need when there's not cross-sector crossing of information. Right. Um, Anybody else? This is not. That's a great answer, by the way. Anybody else have that same problem in, in your organizations or see that uh, in your organizations? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes. <laughs> in in your in the organizations that you work with, right? So this is a common problem in government, and I want to talk about about this today. Is how are we solving this problem? Because if we can't if we can't easily share the data then we're not gonna be able to use the data. We're not gonna be able to link the data. And really, um, what we need to do is get away from these vertical structures that we've had in government forever and look more horizontally across the organization. And data has to flow horizontally. It can't, we can't keep it in our nice little application silos anymore. And cherry pick the data that we need and create these wonderful little pictures, right, with Power BI or Tableau or whatever we're using. So that's really the challenge that our organization, in partnership with departments and with, with um, our central IT department, like with John and Trin and, and her team, is how do we create those platforms and those, those solutions that really integrate that data across the organization and make it accessible for folks like yourself and researchers and analytics and um, evaluating outcomes of our services. So that's the challenge. I would, you know, if I was to say what's the biggest challenge, that's the biggest challenge. And it starts in how organizations grew up, the mainframes, you know, individual applications, and silo data, right? So sharing that data, integrating that data. Is, is very, very important. This is, this is the functions of our uh, Office of the CIO. Those in red um, were either, um, didn't exist. So I've been in the, the, uh, the office now as, as the CIO for uh, about 20 months. So we, we are building an innovation program. Um, you can see Project Management Center of Excellence, Enterprise Architecture, planning, all of those things that should be part of the office of the CIO, and uh, we're building those out. So you might think data, why do you, why do you need you know, strategic planning, why do you need enterprise architecture, uh, why do you need innovation, right? But we see these, all of these functions working together, and it's very important from a data management perspective that you have these disciplines and these various um, functions working together to create a better environment for data access and data sharing and, and research, right? So the use of architects, having a data architect, for instance, very important uh, in any organization. Um, having an innovation program, right? So, so that you're understanding what, what the business problems are that you need to innovate around. You just don't innovate without innovating around a business problem. So we're really excited about building this out and presenting this uh, to our um, to our partners and bringing more expertise in these areas. Anything here resonate or any questions on that? Uh, do you have these functions in your office of the CIO, wherever that looks like, or your organization? Which function do you think you know is really important from a data aspect?
So yeah, the enterprise, we don't have an enterprise architect in the county, obviously. Uh, in fact, we don't have an architecture classification in the county, which is another problem. So we, we, had, we lack architecture skill sets and we want to build those out. Um, so in terms of where we use open source and where we don't, I mean, I think that's, that's part of building these architectures out and finding the best of breed. Um, I think open source is going to be more and more something that we, we utilize. Um, and but it's got to be strategic on where we use it. So I don't I don't know how prevalent it really is in the county today. But I, I do see as we as we create portals and as we create these comprehensive architectures, I do see open source playing a larger role. Um, this is our um, you know the proverbial org chart, but I, I want to point out at the far right is our information management team and. Um, we have some of our folks here from what we call our East team. Great name, Analytics Center of Excellence. You, you want to stand up or raise your hand if you're here? Yeah. So we're very proud of uh, the organization that we're building here around uh, information management under our Chief Data Officer. Mark Renninger has been serving in that work in that, and I know many of you know him well. Um, we have a platform that uh, the organization has been building up um, over uh, years, and that platform is now fairly mature, and we're starting to actually utilize that for research, analytics, and also um, building mobile apps um, off of that platform. And that platform is really designed to do just what uh, we, we were talking about earlier, which is linking data across uh, departments, linking data to an actual anonymized client and then linking services that that client has consumed um, throughout the history with LA County. And so you can see how beneficial that is. You know, first of all, we're taking data from disparate uh, data sets across the county, whether that's health or justice, whatever it may be, and then doing a, a matching algorithm through master data management um, to a client and then taking services from those various uh, entities and then matching that. So what we really want to get to is this 360 degree view of a client and the services that they have consumed. So we can analyze, research, and provide that back to departments uh, to give them information about the services they're providing, which is very, very valuable, which today is very siloed and uh, you know you might have to go to 10 different systems to get the information that we're consolidating into one platform today. So this is something that we think is um, very important that we continue to build on, we can continue to, to integrate data, and I'll show you uh, the architecture that we're building on um, as part of the slide deck as well. Okay, so strategic planning, and how does that really play into where we're going as a county and how does that play into data? So how many of you have a, a strategic plan that has a, a pretty robust data uh, goal? <laughs> how many have a strategic plan? Okay, does it, it doesn't have a data goal? Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> So this is important. Um, if, if an organization is really prioritizing data, and I assume that your organizations are, and if they're not, you might want to raise your voice a little bit. Um, if you're not prioritizing data, if you're not prioritizing the use of data, the integration, sharing of data, then what are you prioritizing? And somebody's not getting it, right? Data, to me, is the differentiator in not just government, but in all organizations. How well you use your data is the differentiator. Private industry, public, it doesn't matter. We have to emphasize it, we have to get better, we have to have a strategy and a vision. And if we don't, the organizations are gonna struggle. If you look at private industry, the organizations that are really using their, their customer data to analyze how they're doing, how they're serving their customers, and then making the proper adjustments instead of just keeping on the same track. Those are the organizations that are thriving. 
and the organizations that aren't doing that, to think that they've got a good thing and, and then they become stale, guess what? They're failing and they're going under, okay? Data is the differentiator. And having a robust uh, strategy emphasizing data is absolutely critical. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about our strategic planning process. You know, and a lot of people, when they, when they think about that, they think of week-long grinds, you know, where you come out every day and you go, oh my gosh, I gotta go back into that again tomorrow. Wow, that was terrible, painful. So we tried to actually create this innovative strategic planning process, right? So two hours, two hour workshops. Think of that, strategic planning in two hours. And uh, lots of post-it notes and, and dots, and, you know, lots of engagement. And so we engaged all departments. We had five two-hour workshops with all departments. And we asked them four questions. And the questions were more business-related. We had business and IT folks. Okay, you don't want to do strategic IT planning with just IT, by the way. That's a bad move. <laughs> it's about the business. I think we all know that, but uh, we had great business participation. We had IT leaders there. We had all levels, so it wasn't just a, a management fest. Um, and we got in a room and we we talked about where you know what are your needs, what's your vision, what are your strategies for your business and for the enterprise, and then how can technology help enable that, right? So the the technology was the second question, not the first question. It's not like Hey, don't you want to use AI? Or is, wouldn't, wouldn't uh, you know, all of this new biometric stuff be cool? Or blockchain, that sounds like a cool thing, right? No, no, no. What are your business strategies and vision? How can technology and data, we, we, we did throw it, and data help you achieve that vision and those strategies? And then what are your constraints to that, that vision? So that's the workshop. We came out of there with huge amounts of, of data. I would have loved to put that actually into a, an AI. Uh, maybe next time we'll do that. And then we analyzed that and aligned it to our department strategic goals and our board strategic goals because you know you can't achieve your uh, business goals anymore without data and, and technology, by the way. But it's an enabler. And we came away with these five goals, okay, which I'm actually really proud of because I think they speak to uh, where we need to go as a county in these, in these areas. Um, mobility is really important. Uh, when you think about the fact that um, our wireless capacity in the county is just not there, in a lot of cases in our facilities. Um, it just hasn't been built up. Um, we still have a lot of folks that are using desktop computers. And um, we still have a lot of in-person meetings where we're driving around the county okay, all day long. So how about, how about we, we use uh, unified communications? How about we keep up our wireless capacity how about if we let people work from anywhere, anytime, you know? So that's kind of the vision of mobility. Does that sound okay? Does that sound okay? Get out of our desks and collaborate and, you know, meet at Starbucks maybe, I don't know. Um, and then data as a utility came out of that. And there was such a strong, strong message. I, it, it was so inspiring. Um, to be in these workshops and hear from business folks about their frustrations and the vision for how they want to use their data. And it wasn't the IT people, it was the business folks. It's like we need access to our data, we need to analyze our data, we want to put models together with our data. We can't get to it. We don't have platforms, we don't have systems, we don't have tools. Um, and so what was inspiring to me and what we don't do enough of in IT, and this is my opinion because I've been guilty of this, we don't go to our business folks enough. We don't say, where are you hurting? What is your strategy? 
what ideas do you have that we could help you with, right? And that was the greatest thing that came out of these workshops. It's like, we, our data is not integrated. It's not in any form where uh, we can access it. Uh, there's pockets where we have some, some good maturity, but a lot of the, uh, the themes and vision came from data type of initiatives, right? So what are you seeing from your business folks? Can somebody articulate maybe a business strategy or a vision that your business folks have that involves data? And that, that shouldn't be too hard because any business strategy involves data, right? Anybody in your business area? Um, our, our program, Hack for LA, we do projects with city uh, and county and nonprofit partners. And our goal for every single one of our projects is to have measurable results. So we start with the results that we're trying to measure uh, right at the beginning before we even, before we even get started. And, uh, and then iterate over the course of the project to see if there's other data that can come out with it. Um, because how, how can you measure success if you don't define it? Okay. And you're solving business problems, I assume, with your solutions as well? Yes. Anybody else? What about somebody from the city? Where's the, where are the city folks? What's the city doing in terms of using data to solve business problems? I think we've been uh, uh, trying to uh, figure out how to link and join data across different uh, departments. It's been probably a challenge, and I think uh, really open data has been pretty widely embraced, but I think we're trying to figure out how to make data actually usable, just because it's open or just because it's there does not necessarily mean it can actually be put into analytics. I think that's probably the next few years is actually putting data to work. Yeah, good. So that's my problem with open data, by the way. It's not just about a bunch of data sets. Spreadsheets on the web. <laughs> open data, I, I, I've challenged my staff, what's open data 2.0 look like? Because 1.0, been around way too long, and uh, you know what's the vision for the next iteration of open data? And we're, we're, we have to get there because you know it's it's become a little stale. To be honest with you, it's a great concept, and it's not like it's going to die. But we got to really bring it alive again and create a new vision for open data. Because um, it's not just about putting a bunch of data sets out there and saying we're done, right? be much more than that, much more than that. Digital civic engagement, that's really new and exciting ways in how we're engaging the residents of LA County, which by the way, isn't a, isn't a new website. New websites are, are important, but there's all kinds of, of ways we can engage our residents outside of just the website, right? Anybody doing some really innovative things around engaging your customers or your residents um, using technology and data. Yes. Anybody suffer from uh, skill sets, the lack of modern skill sets in their organization? <laughs> okay, what are you doing about it?
So um, I don't want to I want I don't want to get too much into the uh, skill set because I I have a soapbox I get on when I start talking about this stuff. But uh, let me just say that you know we have we have these goals, but in the county we don't have the uh, skill sets in all cases like chief data officer, like data architect, like you know a data scientist. So we're missing classifications. Okay. And if you're missing classifications, what do you do when you go out and you want to hire a data scientist? Well, you stuff them in some other outdated classification. So we don't want to do that anymore. So we do have a team that's um, going through this process of creating those classifications, including data, data scientists. So we're doing something about that. Um, we also, uh, I attended a full day session yesterday, which was awesome about innovating the hiring process because it does take sometimes over a year to fill these positions and part of it is you know like a innovation officer strategic planning there's no classification for that so we have to get creative in terms of how we're going to draw attention to that those uh, those classifications So if we don't do better in this area, we're gonna lose ground. So remember the strategic planning, the constraints section, recruitment and hiring was one of the huge constraints along with our procurement cycle as well. But the good thing is we're not gonna just talk about it, we're actually gonna do something about it, right? And a lot of the folks here are partnering with us on that. Okay, how am I doing on, on time? 10 minutes? Gosh. Having fun up here, John. You're killing me here. <laughs> um, all right. So governance. I don't know how many of you have a governance structures in your organization. Kind of like strategic planning. It has kind of this negative connotation. Like if you got to go to a governance meeting, it's like, oh great, what are we going to do there? Um, <laughs> but it, in a federated organization, I can't tell you how important it is to have a very, very good governance structure because it brings people together. And so we have a business management council now where we're, we're bringing business leaders together around um, topics such as data and other uh, IT type to get their input and to help them shape policy and strategies. I can't tell you how valuable that group has been and they just launched uh, a few months ago. And then we have our Technology Management Council, which is the IT leaders from around the county, um, also very important. But we're really trying to engage them at a, at a more of a strategic level versus, you know, a very stale meeting where we're just talking about, you know, a specific policy, right? It's like, let's get strategic, let's help shape the county for the future from both a business and a technical perspective. And then let's use, we have some funds that um, our office uh, is administers and it's uh, what we call the Information Technology Fund, very innovative name. And uh, we're starting to use that now for innovation projects. So departments can come to the IT Investment Board and say, hey, I wanna do this project with using robotics or some other technology and we can use this fund to seed that project. So when we talk about what are we doing with innovation, we're trying to actually carve out some seed money for departments to uh, innovate uh, around business problems with technology and then our legacy uh, modernization fund as well for modernization of legacy systems. So we you know, we just launched a lot of these but um, much more strategic governance than maybe you're used to. Anybody here have a good governance model in their organization they want to bring up, talk about? Um, and then these are subcommittees. So you can see here our information management committee. That Those are bringing together the data experts, the chief data officers around the county to talk about things around data. So another very important group that reports up 
into our business management council and technology management council. Okay, so I wanted to um, dive into this um, with you all because there is some technical aspects here that I think um, would be really important for us to have dialogue around to see where we have some synergies. So to me, this is the, the optimal model, if you will, for a, a data management organization is to have all of these components in place where you have transactions, uh, you have a service-oriented architecture application environment. You have your data integration platform so you can integrate data from these silos that we've been talking about. And then you have your reporting and data warehouse uh, platform. And then you have your analytics functions. So what I see a lot of, um, what, what we're doing in the county is we're doing, we have a lot of requests for this right side of the uh, framework, dashboards, cool looking charts, reports, research, right? The board wants this, executive management wants this. So, so we've got Power BI, we've got Tableau, we've got these, uh, these tools that we're using, right? Where are we getting the data? Where's the data coming from? How accurate is the data? If we put a dashboard together, the next time we create that dashboard, how consistent is that data? Are we giving the board and other executives different results each time? <laughs> Resonate a little bit? So to me, this is, this is a huge problem, right? It's not that we don't have tools and, and we get the data from somewhere, but what kind of results are we producing? How accurate are they? And how usable are they, right? Um, because what's happening a lot is we'll get a request here and we may not have a data warehouse. Okay, if, if we don't have a data warehouse, we don't have a big data platform, then where do we go for the data? Where do we go? We go over here in the production databases. And we extract data from who knows what, hoping it's right, because a lot of times we don't have an inventory of the data. We don't know what meta metadata exists. And so we find an expert and we pick data from these various silo data sets. We extract that and we throw it into Power BI or Tableau. Anybody else see that uh, see that problem? Or what problems that, that has? Or are we the only ones doing that? <laughs> so what I want to do in the county, and this might be, this might outlive me, but I want to put a framework and platforms in place to solve that problem, right? So that it doesn't matter what kind of transactional database you have, whether it's on a mainframe, DB6, Power Builder, we have them all, by the way. Um, doesn't matter because we have this framework in place and we, we move data out of our transactional silo databases into these integration platforms. We have open data, we have data warehouses, we have big data platforms. And we're utilizing those to integrate the data, share the data, link the data, and provide that data and clean it, by the way, so that when we produce these reports and do the research and put the models together, they're accurate, they're consistent, they're accessible, and they're fast. Okay? So that's, that's our dream. And then we have this foundation down here, where developers um, and business analysts and you know our whole SDLC lifecycle lives, right? Because it's not just about research and analytics; it's also about the apps we're building, right? And the framework and the disciplines that we bring to app development um, is also very, very important. So. 
we have a tremendous amount of legacy uh, applications. Anybody else have a lot of legacy applications? Old, old applications, right? We can't wait around to modernize those before we get to the vision, right? So we have to create an environment where we understand what data we have and we start to build across a framework and we have platforms, whether they're within the department or enterprise, that we can use to produce consistent clean data and reports. <laughs> you want to do more questions or are you? No, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Let me just show one more slide. Okay. So does that resonate? I need help building this, by the way, so. So hopefully the slide deck will be available to you and um, what I do is I break this down into problems, solutions, and resources. And you can see the resources uh, are resources that we may not have today. Um, there's a lot of work to do in this area. And um, before we actually get to the maturity that we want. But I wanted to show you one slide here, which is, this is the platform that I talked about and the architecture that developing and partnering with our um, central IT unit. But this is this is a part of the vision, right, where we're creating this enterprise platform where we have, we can take those siloed data sources, bring it into, ingest the data into our, our hub, do the matching algorithm, and create this master data index, and then link the services uh, to those individuals. Very, very modern and important platform that we continue to build on, but also making sure that we have a service uh, architecture and a service layer with that, so that we have a microservices, APIs that can access the platform, so we can quickly build mobile apps and other services that access the data. So it's one thing to build something like this, what we need to do is get out of the building and, and start to actually the power of the platform. You need a service layer for that. And then data hosting as well, so that we're using the cloud um, and where we have a data warehouse, and we can open that up to departments to do other kinds of reporting. All right? So I am going to stop there, because I see someone that's going to give me the hook. <laughs> Bill, thank you very much. announcement our next day to donuts is august 13th tuesday august 13th i think let me make sure real quick yeah tuesday august 13th feel free to sign up and register on the website um we don't have enough time for questions we're going to get into our networking event but feel free to come up and ask bill all of your questions <laughs> but thank you for your for coming out thank you it.